Well, hello, all you gents and gentlewomen. It's Stefan coming at you from a Friday Eve. And I'm here with some intro love. Intro love. I feel like there needs to be a song for it because it's just, it's so lovely. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but it's pretty cool. I listen to it back when I have to edit it and I'm like, man, I feel better. So I hope you guys do too. If not, you know, go fuck yourself. No, I'm kidding. Hey, hey, whoa, 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 pump on the brakes, Steph. <laughs> Let's keep it lovely and heartwarming and, uh, you know, kid friendly. Hey kids, how you doing? You might be in the car with mom and pops while they're listening to old Steffi Poo on a comedy advice podcast. So cover your ears, you little fucks, because Stefan's about to get dirty. Oh my God, what am I doing? Self-sabotage, Steph coming in and i'm so sorry about that to me i guess and maybe to you and maybe the kiddies i don't know what kid names are these days is it daenerys are they game of thrones characters Tyrion? do we have little lannisters in the in this in the back seat i don't know tell me tell me just comment dm me or something just let me know so i can properly tell them to fuck off i don't know why i'm so angry at these kids but you know who i'm not angry at you guys, you guys have been fantastic. I love the support. I love all the likes, all the subscriptions, all the reviews that you guys have been leaving. You guys are my treasure chest of, of just things for my soul, nutrients for my soul. You guys are like this new cultivar of bananas. You guys have rich soul potassium. So my soul is like a huge bodybuilder. Now I feel like I'm, my soul is an Arnold. It's just, it's ready to pump you up. So I am very excited and, and love you guys. Maybe too much. You know, I've been, I've been talking about it. Maybe I should give you guys some space. Stop talking about how much I love you guys. Cause every goddamn episode, it's just like, Oh, love you guys. Yeah. 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 Big old smooch. You know what? No, I'm withholding the smooch this time. I might give you a gentle graze, but no smooch because I feel like I need to give you some space. I get it, but please come back to me. Please come back for the next episode. I don't want to drive you off either. Um, but while I continue to go back and forth in my head about the relationship between us, this episode with none other than Sam Bear, comedian extraordinaire, and we have a great time. She comes in. It's the first out-of-state comedian that's been, well, besides Mark Norman, that's been in the studio that I've had an, a live in-person sesh with, and boy, did it not disappoint. Sam is hilarious, so please follow her, support her, and... Um, uh, and, you know, just go and give her some love, okay? Give her that love that she deserves. And speaking of love that is deserved, guys, I am super excited. Last episode's guest, Lamar Mitchell Jr. and I are putting on a show at the House of Comedy in Phoenix, Arizona, September 8th at 7.30. That's Wednesday, September 8th, 7.30. It's going to be awesome. It's called Trash or treasure where we have eight comedians it's going to be tournament style lamar and i are going to be moderating and we're going to give them a topic so two comics are going to have to take the side of either a trash or treasure and we're going to say your topic is long hair there's a trash or treasure and they're going to argue each side and then the audience is going to decide which comedian uh, had the most compelling argument and then which comedian is slaughtered just dies yeah, they're going to do the thumbs down. We're going to do it like uh, you know, Russell Crowe in The Gladiator. Just bam. So it's going to be awesome. A huge blood sword. I don't know if it's legal in any other state except Arizona. So you guys are super lucky, Arizonians. And get those tickets. Follow me on Instagram for more updates. And you guys, it's going to be so good. And I can't wait. I cannot wait for this show to happen. And I'm going to have it recorded too. So you guys, you'll have some delectable mm, trash or treasure treats. Yum. Yum. All right. Well, that's enough talking for me. So I'm going to leave you to the rest of the episode for more me talking. Great. Love you. Wait, I'm not going to say I love you. Nope. See you soon. The um, Mount Rushmore, not in the same place, but I, a lot of people oh. see it and they're like, we're so underwhelmed. It's we like were... these are carved into a mountain uh, carved with explosives. <laughs> oh my. I feel like, no, and this are, these are old. Like these weren't good explosives. Like a guy's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to do this. <laughs>
Yeah, this will either uh, make the exact the exact mark I want or blow up the entire mountain. We'll see. I'm willing to take that risk. <laughs> that is crazy. I didn't know how it was created, actually. Oh. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. With explosives. How did you think it was created? Well, I watched Richie Rich when I was young. Me too! I am definitely like I thought it was back. lasers, perhaps. <laughs> Oh, I wish. Oh, that would be so cool. But when was it? I don't know when it was even created. I guess 1900s, early 1900s. I just feel yes is the yes and. I'm just going to go with there, my yeah. improv. Yes. Yeah. And I learned that as well in my American history class. I, uh, I'm i trying to remember who's on there. Washington, Lincoln, Teddy Roosevelt. Is Teddy Roosevelt on there? Yes, and probably he, one more. And and uh, Batman, I feel, is the last <laughs> one. Maybe. I'm not sure. But it it. I haven't been there yet, but I really want to go. And I especially want to go now that I know that people just blew up rock with yeah, explosives. They did. Am I messing everything up now? No, no. Please feel free. Hello? You can <laughs> you can move it closer, too. Yeah. Oh, there it move is. It. Okay. Yeah. It, don't worry. It does Great. resist at first, but then it, it succumbs. To yeah. It. that's That was like my first relationship. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, we were in the talking phase for a long time. <laughs> was then... his name Mike? Because that's, that's Mike, too. Ha- <laughs> no. I don't even think I've ever dated a Mike. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Me neither. But well, anyway. Yeah. Mike's they don't sound like really interesting guys. They sound like they kinda like IPAs too much. <laughs> and they're really into sports. They love football. <laughs> that sounds like a Mike to me. Yeah. Mike sounds like a friend of the Brad and Chad's. Oh yeah. Like yeah, he's yeah. not as bad. Like Mike is not like the Chad. But right. Mike defends chad oh yes he's a little he's calmer like, he might be a racist asshole <laughs> but he's oh like he's that guy he's loyal okay so, yeah <laughs> yeah because he has nobody else because everyone Everyone's who's met him now him. is like this is a horrible human being that sounds like mike to me yeah um, mike's like yeah but he always comes and gets a beer with me yeah he always, yeah mike's the guy he doesn't sing karaoke but he watches chad <laughs> and brad do it and he goes those are my friends. Feel, th- those are my bros over there. <laughs> He's singing along in his beer. Yeah. Oh, God. That's classic Mike. Yeah. And he's got like a weird receding hairline. He, but he oh. won't shave his head. Like he won't commit to fix the problem. He's got the little island yes! right there. Oh, man. And the classic baseball cap. And he keeps asking people. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. He doesn't like to show it. Yes. But still, he hasn't shaved it But yet. he hasn't shaved it. Oh, and he's like fooling everyone until one day it's just a tad warm. And he has to wipe the sweat from his brow. But to get the good wipe, as everyone knows, you have to remove the cap. And now everyone sees he's oh, a big fat no. liar. <laughs> oh, man. That, that he's exposed. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. He even goes to weddings in ball caps, I'm pretty sure. Oh, that guy. Or he's Ugh. got a cowboy hat, which is kind of cool. I would wear a cowboy hat. I can't really say anything. My cousins are getting married, and a lot of, I think, uh, them wear cowboy hats. But my cousins are rancheros. Like, their cowboy hats are oh. real. That's right. Last time like, we talked about you, uh, your family, what was it? A sheep farm? Yes. A century farm. It's a sheep farm out in Colorado. That is super cool. Yeah. It's oh. very cool. We actually, we just went to a wedding right before Yellowstone and we ended up going to Idaho and like right on the border of Idaho and Wyoming. Uh-huh. And I had the opportunity to wear a cowboy hat to this wedding, but I did not. Because I, I didn't know. I didn't know. They said casual wear, which I didn't know what that meant. So I just wore, uh, <laughs> I wore a suit. <laughs> I just like, so as a white man, I actually received not only instructions, but options and went, <laughs> fuck that. No, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. <laughs> I love I, that you're like, it said casual wear. And instead of doing any research or asking anyone, I went, nah, going to wear a suit. Uh, cowboy hat optional. Oh yeah, I'm gonna fuck this opportunity. I wore a ball cap instead. I went. I went you full went mic. Mike. I went full mic. Uh, that is. I opened went... the buttons a little bit, so I was open mic. So it's it even worse. You're yeah, just, it was. And, and my friend Chad else and Brad is were there. Casual and looks nice and is comfortable, and you're just like sweating bullets. Oh my god! I you know I did ditch the jacket, but I ended up because we we all did. It was mostly family, so we were like, "What are you wearing? Why try? What are you wearing? What are you wearing?" <laughs> And I was like, I don't, I don't know what we're gonna wear. So we all ended up wearing something different, a little bit different. I was on the higher end of the fancy spectrum. Uh, brother wore shorts, so you say that lower. judgmentally, and I hear that I too have a brother and almost judge everything they do. Right. 
But the invitation said casual. And your brother went, I read that. He, I, casual means shorts. <laughs> he ended up, no, he lived up to it. They were like, you look great. And then they're like, Stefan, uh, nice try. You did okay. <laughs> and you opted not to wear the cowboy hat? They were like, did you end it up, did you read the actual invite? <laughs> I was like, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what ca- casual. Casual is very, it's a broad spectrum. So It is. I would never encourage people to dress casual at my wedding. Um, not I. engaged. Nor putting I. it out there, but uh, <laughs> I would no because I've just seen what people wear to some weddings. I know, and I, I think it's like the Walmart special. I shouldn't have said it, but I said it, and I'm just like, don't like. Yeah, there are some people that just don't. I, I mean, there are so many rules. I feel like there needs to be a guidebook, or when people send their invites, there need to be more detailed instruction. Or send a casual. picture. Yes, nice casual. Yes, I feel like there's a difference between like nice casual and just. Casual. Yeah. They, casual with a cat. Casual. Casual. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you can wear flip flops. Yes. With oh, a cat, yeah. Yeah. They're like, okay. Just show up casual. Keep yeah. it cash. Yeah. Cash. That's the one. That's the <laughs> one. The ultimate of the most casual ever. <laughs> That's like, oh, you haven't changed out of what you wore to bed last night? That's fine. Long oh, PJs? Care. Yeah. Come on in. <laughs> oh, you're not wearing a shirt? That's okay. That's we said fun. keep it cash. Keep it cash. Yeah. Hang loose. <laughs> Do your thing. Speaking of keeping it cash and hanging loose, doing your thing, everybody, welcome to a comedy <laughs> advice podcast. My name is Stefan Stani, your host. Joining me today, very special guys, all the way from California. All the way, Sam Bear. Clap, 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 clap. Snap, snap, snap. For me, thank you. Yes, welcome to yes. the the studio. I don't have a name for it yet. Maybe I should call it the. Uh, well, no, not Mike. The Cash. The Cash Studio. The Cash. Keeping it cash with some comedy advice. Although you know what, you look very nice. I think Thank maybe you. you'd be smart casual because you've got a lovely, looks like uh, a Japanese garden. Looks beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> well, yes, I did think about this. I know you filmed. So I'm like, just gotta think of the longevity of oh. everything. So this was a thought out outfit. This was looking. This was not cash. This was <laughs> this is California cash, which means I knew what I was wearing yesterday. <laughs> Uh, well, so yeah. <laughs> I I had the opportunity to wear a cowboy hat yet again, but I ended up not. I need to. This you is should the just call the studio the missed opportunity land. The missed. Oh yes, Stefan and the room, the chamber <laughs> of missed opportunities. It's like a disappointing <laughs> hair of body. Mike's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got the same the same. He just needs to shave that dang head to become a Michael. I feel like that's the elevated Ooh. version of Mike. Yeah. It's like a Pokemon. He just shaves the head and then he becomes a Michael and he's just, he wears khakis now instead of Yeah, jean Michael's shorts. much more attractive than Mike. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He ditches Chad and Brad and he goes off <laughs> like, the Like, have they always been this racist? <laughs> <laughs> he just has an awakening, the renaissance <laughs> of Michael. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? Enough about Michael. We've talked a enough. lot about, yes, enough about Michael. Sam, I wanted yeah. to ask about you because you've been on the podcast before and it was a splendid time. Yes. And you. we learned so much about you. Comedian, producer, you have Bear Cave comedy mm-hmm. and you've been putting on some great shows. You've been performing. Yeah. How has everything been going since then? Was that pandemic? When that we... was pandemic because like... I was supposed, that was early pandemic, I believe, because okay. I was supposed okay. to be out here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A year and some change ago, and then we were like, "Can't, can't do that." Yeah, that's not possible. <laughs> Done. Um, oh, wah, wah. <laughs> things. Attention, listeners across the galaxy, all the way from Australia to Houston. Do we have a pube problem? If so, our friends at Manscaped have cleared you for takeoff with their fourth generation and brand new lawnmower 4.0. Kick your pubes to the next planet with the Performance Package 4.0. The orbits in your pants will feel like you're in zero gravity when you use the best tools for the job from the leaders in male grooming. Join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get your rocket ready for takeoff by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code ACAP. Now, I've tried to trim my clackers with regular trimmers, scissors, heck, even just yanking them out. But you know what? Each time there's blood or tears or both. So guys, don't be a silly goose. Be a smart duck. Get the new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. This spaceship is here to guide you on a journey to trim your body, balls, butt, and even your anus. I'll tell you what, I got one and I used it and I went on several trips around the galaxy. Abort Harry Balls and Buzz Lightyear that Woody with Manscaped. 
Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code ACAP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code ACAP at manscaped.com. For a clean trinity and beyond, your space balls will thank you. I feel very fortunate. I, uh, with a little bit of luck, and I say that knowing all the work I put into it, but mm-hmm. I, I don't, personally, I don't think anybody in the entertainment or creative sector shouldn't believe in luck and timing because mm-hmm. there's a lot of talented people. There's a lot of people with really great ideas. And yeah. sometimes beyond our control, we miss that beautiful window of opportunity, yes. you know? Um, yeah. So all that being said, I did get, I think lucky. And also just, I knew what I wanted to do. And so mm-hmm. comedians in your kitchen really took off and helped sustain and really save my productions for uh-huh. the year because The virtual shows just weren't as fulfilling for me. And it was the same amount of work and effort Mm -hmm. as the live shows. But then at the end, I didn't feel the same way. I wasn't happy and excited. I was just really glad that they were done. And I did not like that feeling. And I was Hmm. like, I work for myself and I don't need to chase that feeling. The money's not worth that. But Comedians in Your Kitchen is still the first comedy cooking show. And we have a trained chef and we do everything in real time. So we don't have anything prepped. I guess it's a lot of chef's nightmares, but I'm like, we're here to show you that you can do a full meal uh, with a beverage start to finish in under an hour. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Dish is clean too. That's And how did this idea start? Where were you thinking? Uh, I was crying after being furloughed from my job. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm one of those professional uh people i just hit the sorry (laughs) knock on wood (laughs) i don't know (laughs) sometimes i have muscle spasms i just i can't hear the missed opportunities so then it starts to resonate it's great yeah uh i'm sure you know this by the amount of people you've had on your podcast is that Mm. i think when comedians or people chasing that comedy dream are in a transitional period they are multifaceted and have bills and have a lot of this professional life that Mm our comedic fans may never know about simply because they Mm -hmm. know us in one version. So Mm -hmm. I have a master's in public health and was an alcohol and drug counselor for the County of Santa Barbara working for behavioral wellness. I mean, and when I tell people that they're like, you had like a real job. (laughs) Like you were in charge of people and their mental health. They were on drugs. I'm like, "Mm -hmm." yep. And they were actually the 100 hardest cases in the County. They're like, dang. And that was your job. Mm -hmm." Well, I was furloughed from that job. So, Oh no. Yes, the second round that happened in the ca- in the country. Um, so how the, it came out, I, I was crying and working out and I gave myself mm-hmm. a day or two to just, because it came out of nowhere to me and it was really hard. Like I didn't do anything wrong as if yeah, that would have made yeah. it better. It was, right. you know, it was just counties didn't have cut. money for people and that's decisions were made. Such a bummer that that's what they're cutting i'm sure there's a lot of cutting going on but well and i felt really bad for my team because the client number stays the same so the workload goes up on the people oh man oh yeah and i thought what do i want to do and what do i like doing Mm -hmm. and uh i like making people laugh i like entertaining Mm -hmm. i like eating and i like eating when other people cook and i want to get better at cooking nice and then i thought what other sector do I know that has a lot of money? That was the question I think that really propelled me forward mm, because smart. during COVID, that was a really important question to ask. Who has a lot of money that they have to spend? And I also used to work in student affairs for years. And I know wow. their budget has to be spent every year or it will be cut the following year because the school will say, you didn't need this much money. Even during a pandemic, they'll be like, well, you should get less next year even if students come back because you didn't spend oh man and i was like i know they are a little desperate to spend their money but i wanted to give something of quality and substance and i just was like this is this is how i'm gonna do it Mm -hmm. i know the market i know what they need i know that i have an offer that is not out there at all Mm -hmm. and this is going to work i did not know it would work as well as it did and when it really took off i was just like (gasps) You know, when your dream is working and you're like, it's happening. It's happening. Um, I don't know. I've never had that feeling. But yes, go on. Yes, please. You do. Are you kidding me? I'm, that's how I feel even just watching your podcast. I'm like, oh, my God, it's happening for him. Like all the. Yes, I'm. 
that's why I came back. You can have me back anytime. I just <laughs> the, the the guests keep getting just bigger and better, and I'm oh. just so you are very good at pulling the essence of somebody. Oh. Oh, and people just seem to really let their guard down around. What is Thank this chamber? But I like. <laughs> what is, is the calming happening chamber? In here? It's changed. The the gases have come in, and now it's <laughs> yeah. more calming. Not no, yeah, not that calming. Not that calming. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm doing that, and That's fantastic, uh, it really cooled down for the summer, which mm-hmm. I know is normal just for student affairs and programming. But right, we're picking right. up for fall, and now with live shows back, I'm really kicking it up a notch. And That's so cool. Yeah. What has been on on the um, cooking? What has been the coolest dish that you have had made on comedians in your kitchen? Yeah, on comedians in your kitchen. We, uh, it was cool for me because I'm not a, a tofu person. Like I don't go to the grocery store. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna pick this up and do something with it. Um, <laughs> Mike says that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we made this really delicious. Um, fried tofu sandwich with a homemade, Yum. yeah, trace colores, like cabbage topping and a homemade oh. spicy aioli. Oh my God. I'm an, oh, I'm an aioli fan. Okay. It this is great. was so delicious. And then like fresh sliced tomatoes and cucumbers. Yum. Yeah. And I just kept being like, this is healthy. We get to eat this. Like it oh. was, and I've never had like I said, tofu really before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was so easy to make and so accessible. And for me, that was a really fun dish because I felt much like the students we were performing with, I too was getting the experience of saying like, oh, I can do this. Mm-hmm. This is actually incredibly affordable. This is really delicious. Yeah. And, you know, I want to put more vegetables in this dish. I want that crunch. I want those colors. Right. Um, which I think can be hard for anybody at any age, but certainly at a university level. Like, how do I find ways to put vegetables into what I'm eating? Because, like, I know mm-hmm. I need to eat them, but how do I do it? It's a chore. Yeah. 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 That's awesome, though. Yeah. That was one of the things I really loved, loved making. Um, and then – What I was the really dish called, by the way? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, gosh, I don't think we had, like, a fun name for it. I think it was just, like, a fried tofu sandwich. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. Yeah, I was thinking tofu crunch. But, um, uh, well, all right. Uh, tofu crunch was my favorite dish <laughs> we made. <laughs> I like the trace colores too. Tofu trace colore. No, all right. That's well, too, I'll, too I'll, mouthy. That's that, very, yes, that's spent more time saying the word than actually chewing the sandwich. So, but some of the hacks I learned from comedians in your kitchen, mm-hmm. which I, I always would tell the chefs, they didn't think they were hacks because they had been cooking professionally for a decade. And here I am, very novice in the kitchen. Uh-huh. Um, and that's also one of the, like, niches or uniqueness of the show is that we have someone who can answer any culinary question, but then they are kind of forced to take a backseat to, like, what do I do with this knife? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so I I'd always would have them do, like, fun chops, like, because they need to move the show along quicker mm-hmm. and uh, things like that. But... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say these are hacks for me and and all the regulars out there. So, like, one of the hacks, get multiple colored carrots. The purple carrots, the white carrots, and then slice them at an angle, and people think you're just amazing. Oh, wow. Nice yeah. technique. Oh. So, sli- slice them like this? Yeah. A little angle. Okay. A little angle. Maybe not like this. Color. That not, doesn't seem like the professional. Yeah, you're, I feel like you're slicing towards your hand. No, you want to slice away. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yes, away. Because I was thinking, I might chop my fingers off. <laughs> like, yeah, keep cutting like that. <laughs> As we say in our intro, I'm not the professional chef. <laughs> that is so cool. So, Comedians in Your Kitchen, is there going to be a uh, season two? A season or two. Or is it going to continue? I'm going to do everything I can to make it continue. Yeah. And uh, so far, we're in the early stages of season two. I would think uh, in fall, we have a few universities that have uh, booked us. And very cool. It's it's really cool. It's Man, very exciting. That's awesome. And so beyond that, now that live shows have started, well, things have started to open up back again. Yeah. Are you doing more shows? Yes. I, did you come to Phoenix to do shows or is this just a pleasure yeah. trip? So weird. Sorry. Ooh, is this just for fun? It's a pleasure trip. <laughs> oh, have you been talking to Mike? Oh, God, yeah. It's <laughs> been too much time with Mike. Sorry. Uh, is this a fun trip? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, more pleasure than work, but um, I've been meeting with uh, some different bookers for both nice. performance opportunities as well as expanding, um, bringing Bear Cave comedy out wow. to some Phoenix venues. Yeah. 
That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Also helps me write it off. Oh, nice. Very nice. Business. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess now if the IRS is watching, this was a fully professional uh, we, trip. We've got documentation. Yeah, That's it's right, right here. It's happening. Yeah, recorded. That's it, how it is. <laughs> No, I should. I need to hide the wink. I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> the wink ruined it. I'll edit that out. No wink. So uh, <laughs> anyway, how long are you here for? By the way, are you here just the weekend? Or are you? Uh, I've actually. I've been here. I've been here since uh, J July first. Oh, that's right. That's right. It Yes, sorry. You Yellow... were the one who wasn't here. I'm on, yeah, I'm on Yellowstone time here. Still <laughs> wild grazing like a buffalo. Oh, God. Okay, so you've been here for a little bit. Yeah, and, I'll um, be leaving on... I did. Yeah. <laughs> 110 degrees. Uh, yeah, I'll be leaving on Wednesday off to Mexico. Wow. Mm. Is Bear Cave Comedy going international? <laughs> or is this another pleasure trip? <laughs> <laughs> this is... <laughs> This is purely a pleasure trip. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I love that. Um, oh, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, as well, a self-employed nice. person who really loves what I do, my laptop is with me almost all the time. So even when I'm on vacation, nice. I tend to be working a little. Yeah. Uh, but I will be leaving my laptop. <gasps> so it will not be coming with me to Mexico. So that will wow. actually be wow. a pleasure trip. Wow. A yes. Pure <laughs> Pleasure Pure trip. ecstasy. <laughs> oh, man. Does your, by the way, I, I feel like my laptop, I use it so much for the work that I do, the podcast, everything, mm -hmm. writing, comedy, all that. I feel like I need a name for it because people name their cars, right? Is that still a thing? Men name their cars. Is, really? Is that just a men thing? Actually, I've named both my cars, but. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> What have you named them, by the way? Uh, you... My first car was who? It's still running. Who? It's still running. It's a <laughs> white um, Volvo from like 1980s, and we get. Uh, and it's not named Mike. No, no, it's named Blanca. Oh, Blanc! Wow, uh -huh. I love it. Okay, it's named Blanca, and Blanca. yeah, it's been retired to. Um, I, I gave it to my mom. She she loves the car. Okay. Uh, it's been retired to stay like just in Santa Barbara where my family's from. Okay. And she gets approached pretty regularly by people who want to buy it outright from her because you can't find, I mean, it, from 1980, but you, wow. you can't find this car anywhere. And it's wow. a very, yeah, it, at the time when it was released, it was the luxury model. So I tell people when I was driving at 18, I'm like, you're riding in a luxury car. <laughs> <laughs> luxury Blanca. Mm -hmm. They're like, are the windows automatic? I'm like, roll them down yourself. Little exercise. Little exercise <laughs> moment. Oh, <laughs> uh, there's a soothing squeak when it just goes down. Yeah, That's gym amazing. included. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's a, okay. So Blanca and what's the... My current vehicle is a... <laughs> it's a blue gray chevy malibu but i named the car lulu because i bought it from my cousin whose name was louis who had just had a grandson named louis Aww. and i couldn't come up with anything more clever and i just thought lulu works for me i like lulu and then when it breaks down it could be a lulu lemon that's great but you know what? we'll drive on because we've got the the wheels for it so we're gonna give some advice thank yes. you sam for talking a little bit about yourself I can't think of a better way to be able to put the agenda on something so it's on paper, printed out like yeah. a uh, newscaster. But anyway, we got an inspirational quote to help us because have you ever felt down? Have you ever felt like you have not accomplished your dreams? Have you ever been in the chamber of missed opportunities? Well, yes. it's happened to me, and I like some inspirational quotes to help get me up and roaring and ready to go. So I've got one here. I've actually got two. I'm going to choose one, but Ooh. I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes to help them get through their dark days. Inspirational quotes to actually, I do. Ooh. Yes, it can't be the same as last time. I don't. It won't. I be. don't remember the last time, so you yeah, can, it, it can be. be. No, um, I, I I truly do. I say this multiple times a day. I say the oh. universe is rigged in my favor in all ways. Always. Oh, I love the universe is rigged in my favor. Always, always. Wait, what? I messed it up. Oh my gosh. Universe. Come on, universe. Please come to me. The universe is rigged in my favor in mm. all ways. Always. Oh, in all ways. Okay. That's beautiful. That's yeah. really nice. Where did you, is that a Sam Bear original? No. Uh, I wish I could take credit for that. No. Uh, 
I think I heard it on TikTok, but <laughs> I've uh, I've been uh, working harder in, in manifestation. And I really do believe in the power of, of manifestation and abundance. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've also, you know, I'm at that age where like, if you're not running marathons, getting married or having kids, it's time to work on yourself. So that's where I am. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and if I feel myself getting overwhelmed or frustrated, just even with little issues in life, I this helps me slow down and, and realize whatever is currently happening that the universe has worked yeah. in my favor in all ways, always. And I just kind of trust that whatever's happening, there's a greater purpose for it. That's and he had it coming. So. Incredible. <laughs> That's yeah, and you know what? That's gonna be our TikTok <laughs> clip. That'll be perfect. Okay. This is great. Well, great quote. I've actually what got What is your quote? <laughs> I've got one that I've also got from TikTok. No, it's by a robot. It's called InspireBot, and it uses AI <laughs> to take the wisest words known to man or woman and just mash them together. This is like the Bible, maybe TikTok, uh, comic books, and it just uses AI to take the wisest words and stitch them all together for the ultimate quote. Did we do this last time? Yes. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. So the quote this week is going to be... Presuppose that more people stopped saying kiss me and started saying, I am so great. Don't you think that would make planet Earth a better place? Yes. Post COVID. Absolutely. (laughs) That robot is very wise. Yes. You know, I feel like a lot of times Sparabot is against humanity, but I feel like this time this is really pulling for us. Pro humanity. Just stop. He's like, stop asking to be kissed. Yes. Yeah, he's like, whoa, COVID really did a number. I see what happens when <laughs> humanity is silly. And now I'm going to try and make it right. Yeah. No more kisses, more I am great. Yeah. And it's kind of going into the manifestation. T- I, I also, I have started to delve into manifestation. Uh-huh. And I think I had another guest on here, a local comedian, Ashley Rose, who was very wise, mm-hmm. just like yourself. And she was also talking about manifestation, the law of attraction and some other things. And I was, it opened up this world to me. And I was like, wow, this is really, really cool. So I started manifesting small things like parking spots. And now I manifest parking spots all the time. I and never it, worry about parking spots anymore, ever. It's amazing. And it's, it's always there right when I need it. It's a yes. It's, and I can manifest where I want the parking spot. Oh, I haven't gotten that far yet. I'm just like, I need a parking spot. You can do where you want it. Yeah. My gym actually has really difficult parking. Not uh-huh. for me. Not uh-huh. for me. Um wow. but I will manifest where the parking spot I want is and it's always there. How okay, let me ask you. At what point do you start manifesting it? When you get into the parking lot or before is it I leave before? my house. I, I can do it at any time. Okay. But I I try for me, I do try to consciously start it before I get in my car. And then the Uh whole way as I'm driving, I really think like, I'm so glad this parking spot's already there. It's going to make getting into the gym really easy. And I'm really grateful that everyone else has found parking, but there's still this spot for me. Mm, This is where I make the mistake. I do it too late. So I'm already in the parking lot. I still get a spot, but I think if I do it earlier, then I'll get a a good one and yeah. I'll be able to choose mine. Okay. Well, this is good. Get into comedy and advice, folks. Just it's, it's almost as if that were the Yeah, premise. the name of the pot. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost it's like a good delicious tofu crunch, you know, delicious and healthy for you. Yum yum. All right. So, now that we're nice and inspired, thank you Inspire about. We're going to go into the questions. We've got this first one from the Reddit advice column. It says My first job is at this cafe, and I just learned that I need to write down orders, but my handwriting is really bad. I'm 16, and I've been training at this small job. I learned that they're starting to do lunches now, and the manager is very kind and said I have to write down orders, but my handwriting is terrible. Any tips? Text the orders to the kitchen. I was thinking the same thing. (laughs) Oh, beautiful. Yes, exactly. I feel like if you text. Who's still taking down orders with the pen now anyway? Right? Who needs to write anyway? Do you did you ever? You take... don't even need to write. Your voice text, oh, voice to text, that's... not even text, voicemail. That's the beautiful. kitchen. Oh my! You, you know what? You could be like, "Can I take your order?" And then just be like, "Hold on, one sec, Siri, record this." <laughs> oh, cheeseburger? You want the cheese? Okay, great. And then just you know, go around the room, and then they, yeah. they. So if there is a mess, a mistake, it's on them. Exactly. They're like, well, let me play back the tape here. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Cheeseburger with onions? Uh-huh. Oh, that belongs right there. Mm. Charles or Mike. I don't know. Mike would try and pull it. But um, yeah, I think voice recording, text, 
maybe pictures if you want to draw a picture of a hamburger. No, <laughs> Sam gave a weird face for that yeah. one. Yeah, I want to say yes, I really do, but I have <laughs> an overinflated sense of confidence when it comes to my drawing skills, oh. and then when it comes to the practice of them, I am met with the reality. That's true. That it is. It is an art <laughs> that requires diligence and practice, neither of which I've given it, but still have the confidence that I could draw anything. That's a pretty good point. That's a so pretty like, good point. I don't know if I'd get a hamburger, but whatever I got, I would probably deserve it because I'd be like, the fact that you even ascertained some form of food from this, I'll take it. I could see the chefs being very confused at the drawings. Like, is this a boulder with lettuce on it? No, 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 no. That's a hamburger. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah, good point. Also, I'm giving them instructions on to doing something way harder than riding. It's like, I need I need to ride my bike. Well, why don't you drive a Lamborghini first? And that'll be great. I, oh, so Lamborghinis aren't like regular cars? <laughs> I, I didn't really... I, was, I don't. So you're judging me. I didn't see your Lambo outside. My apologies. I guess you know what your garage is closed, and you have a lovely home. And you're like, you should see the Lambo. <laughs> oh my god! I wish I had a Lambo. I have. So they don't drive regular. They don't drive. Well, I was saying. I don't even regular... think I sound smart enough to drive a Lamborghini. Just the fact that I said they don't drive regular. They don't... <laughs> I feel like I feel like if you have a Lamborghini, they need to be a stick shift. Because if you have a Lamborghini and it's an automatic. Okay, well, to put this out there, all of my cousins can drive stick shift because um, farm equipment is stick shift. Oh. And. Yeah. Fun fact. So, like. Lamborghinis, <laughs> the original Lamborghinis were taken parts from farm equipment and they put them in the car. So, really, the Lamborghini is the classy car. The it's classy. The the classy car when you're keeping it cash. Oh, I love yes. <laughs> it's like the it's like the elegant tractor. It's the farmers only of cars. Oh my gosh. Oh, toot toot. No, that's the train. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently you've never Hon driven a Lambo either. <laughs> <laughs> I have a custom horn on my Lamborghini that goes toot toot. Speaking of horns, I really judge cars that have like little bitchy horns like beep beep. I do too. I had this idea maybe five years ago to do custom horns and just do <laughs> i don't know why. no explain it more let's so the ability you know when you uh, so I, there are little little um weak horns that are like neat, yeah neat. and then there are so i thought yeah i have a car like that it's my little 2009 <laughs> kia spectra betsy neat. And uh, she's still alive, but uh, she well, doesn't she's have... going to die. Yeah, she's going to die with that horn. Oh, God. <laughs> and then when you lock a car, there's also that like, e -e. and so it sounds horrible. So yeah. I was thinking, why don't you customize horns so that when you yeah. honk it, you can either, it can be a horn or it can be your favorite song or it could be uh, like Kesha if you want TikTok. No, 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 no. And then people are like, wow, I'm going to get out of the way for this awesome person because they have great taste in music. Yeah. Or it could be just your voice. Get out the way. Yeah, yeah right. Oh, my. Oh, I told, missed opportunity again. <laughs> Good thing we're in the chamber. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Ludacris, you could just pop that in the horn and then move. And then yeah, I would like, actually, I would contemplate a Ludacris like horn level. I'd like the option. I don't think all, I, because yeah. here's the thing. I use my horn. Mm -hmm. And uh, my boyfriend's like, you use, you use that horn way too much. And I said, here's the thing. I think it's the most underutilized part on the car. Yes. And seatbelts. I agree. But <laughs> I, Yeah, it's fair. Good. <laughs> like, the car came with the horn. And the horn, contrary to popular belief, it is also meant to, like, help other people avoid near accidents. Yes. It's not just, like, when you're frustrated and you're in my way. It's, yeah. hey, like, are you you are clearly not paying attention. Like, there's another car over here. Or, like. Honestly, to, to a horn out. saved my life once. I really, yeah, I um, it's scary to think about, but I I was driving back through L.A. from a show, and I mm -hmm. realistically, I just I should have just stayed in L.A. I was too tired, and oh. I was drifting over to the median, and Ooh. yeah, and you know I don't know who this was, but like someone, I mean, we're just going at it with their horn, just really, and I uh -huh. woke up. I know it's terrifying to even admit that it's it's very scary. I pulled off and I I 
I got a hotel and I I stopped driving that night. I was like, yeah, I feel like God's like, you're safe, but like, mm. yeah, <laughs> make a choice. I think I've been in places where I've been so tired. I remember I was driving back from LA or no, not LA. Las let's Vegas. just always, no, let's just blame LA. Yeah. LA. <laughs> there's some sort of snooze gas or something. No, but <laughs> it's the smog. <laughs> it's the, the smog just puts you in this gentle, sometimes eternal slumber. But um, yeah, I was going back from Las Vegas and I literally, I was pinching myself. I was mm-hmm. so tired. And then I was like, hmm, maybe I should have not driven. That might've yeah. been the best option. It's but, a pretty scary thought when you start yeah. realizing like i was doing the head nod mm-hmm. i was altered maybe i shouldn't give these like how i was staying awake when i shouldn't have been driving <laughs> tips because they didn't work but uh, uh yeah, <laughs> yeah what's uh, the next problem no i don't yeah so let's move on <laughs> this is great great advice um <laughs> next veering in a lot of different directions with advice oh just like uh, us when we're sleeping in cars that's great <laughs> honk honk next question it says i think I have a staring problem. So to explain, when I'm in public places, I tend to look at people like straight in the eye on accident. And if they look back, I look away. Then I look back to check if they're still looking and repeat. I don't want to make people uncomfortable or think that I am judging them in any way. What can I do to stop this? Oh, add in a little wink and they'll just think you're flirting with them. Yeah, I like that. I, you like know what? it has to be. No, don't... <laughs> <laughs> Not like my IRS wink. <laughs> That's a little. Brad, that's a lot of editing for you. So, that is uh, a lot. I'm gonna have to no. take so much out. <laughs> Close your mouth. <laughs> 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 a wink should not take the entirety of your body to convey, and you're I'm like, like fling, you're bounce. almost flinging yourself out of the chair. Yeah. Like. That's oh god! I need to, I need to go on like winking classes or something. There's got to be some sort of tutorial. There has to be a TikTok video on how to wink. If not. There should be there a should. opportunity. Proper, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, missed opportunity. Amazing. Um. So yeah, that's a wink. my quick solution. Is just wink. Just throw a wink in. Like throw you, a wink. You look, lock eyes, look away, look back, and then look away. That's wonderful. My day would be made if somebody. Right? I I think yeah, and then I because you're gonna, gonna start say, playing like a really good story in your head, like oh, like oh, somebody. Is it the shirt? Is it the pants? Is it the hair? Like, ooh. Yeah. Is it the cowboy hat? Somebody. That I left at home? That I left. Yes. They were like, I knew what you were going to do. I knew it. And you look good. You would look better with the. That's a lot in a wink, but I feel like. Winks it can, can be convey said. a lot. Winks. A wink I mean, is worth a thousand words. As they say. They do. Is that one of Hallmark's rejected, <laughs> rejected cards? That actually is, would be a great line. Like, Hallmark, because I guess they get. Lots of card submissions. I would buy a Hallmark rejected card. Oh, yeah. Because they reject slogans. You know, like, happy birthday, you're still alive, I guess. You know, didn't make it, but, like, there's a market for that guy. I think I may have seen that card somewhere. So is there, like, a funnel? Like, if you can't make it to Hallmark, they pass it on to, I don't know, some other brand? Because they've got those really trashy cards as well in the supermarket they do the image that came up for that for me though was willy wonka and the chocolate factory the like good egg bad egg (laughs) the bad ones just go straight to the incinerator (laughs) so (laughs) what's the incinerator of greeting cards oh man i think it's uh tiktok uh, TikTok. yeah there it is that tiktok is just the general garbage pile i think with some it's like the dump because you've got some good things there's some gems out of there maybe it's the thrift store because there's oh, some gems. That's true. Hidden gems. You're like, how did this get here? Like, this is... Honestly, more women have been diagnosed with adult onset ADHD via TikTok than their 30 years of going to the doctor. Oh, my God. Facts. That's... Hi. I feel like we can... I can splice so many TikToks from this. This is so beautiful. I wish I had a TikTok. I have a TikTok. I'm not... Of course anyone. you do. Yeah, of course I do. I'm not successful at it, well, of but course it's there. You're not. It's, it's talking. It's ticking and talking. I get so excited when I post what I think is mm-hmm. going to go viral, and I'm just like, "This is it." And I, I even think, "Ooh, I'm even ready to make my." Oh my god, I didn't think I, I'm ready. Zero views. <laughs> oh, I yes for I hours have been there. for hours. Like the, the algorithm went. Oh no, no one is going to see this no one they're like hallmark do you want this and hallmark's like nope and then it just goes 
I don't know where it goes into the universe, but you know what? Not I, even the universe. Nobody is looking at it. Maybe we could do a new social media called Hidden Gems. And that's where we take all of the videos that are so good that got zero views or one view because we saw them. And then we just <laughs> put them there. It's the treasure chest of TikTok. Yeah. And Bella Porch is banned because I don't get it. Bella, wait, I don't know what that is. She's got like... 150 million for i don't know i don't know what she does she has a band N- bella porch is her is that her name i think so she bella she porch. sings the build a Bear? build a bitch oh <laughs> no <That's her> song. <laughs> it's a very catchy song okay okay so i sure she's <laughs> yeah talent is subjective i sure yes i listen i sing that song so that's i like the song is she like but Rebecca? i guess i don't like her account but oh, I do, I so okay. I don't follow her, but I will look her up. So I guess I'm helping her views. It's a very, she doesn't know about me. Hi. Okay. It's an interesting, hey, she also, she's But I listener. also know that she gets a lot of flack for how many followers she has, because I don't think she's doing like, I don't know what hmm. I, what I need a TikToker to do for me to feel like you are worthy, but I, but she's not doing it. Whatever, <laughs> whatever I need as a non-follower of her, she's not giving to me. She's. Oh. <laughs> that's where we're at in my life this is and amazing. she's probably so much younger than me so i shouldn't even be saying those kind of things but she's whatever this is, this is america you i've said say, it it's too late this is yeah you know what it's out into the universe and you're in charge of editing so it's this not gonna is... be cut out so. <laughs> yes this might be the promo clip we might just be talking directly just to talking bella shit about bella porch's <laughs> tiktok oh man well um I think we answered all of the, yeah, honk, honk, on to the next. We're taking the exit and going (laughs) to the end of the podcast. Sam, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for joining, especially in person. This was great. Where can people? Yes. (laughs) This is where you say you had a great time. I, oh, had a great time. No. It uh, sounds forced now. I don't like it. It sounds like we're just revving the engine on the Lamborghini and we're ruining it. No, so. this was this this was so great. I was really excited to come and uh and do this in person. Like I said, I've been I know I struggled so hard to like find the podcast uh, to to do to, to send it out to people. Mm-hmm. But once I did, then I was like, "Oh, okay." And so I like listening and watching. Um, I like I said I enjoy just the dynamic you have it feels very comfortable. Thank you. And I appreciate that. And as a talkative guest, I feel like you let your guests oh. talk. And I think sometimes that gets in the way when people are hosting. Mm, they want to yes. do the talking. And the reality is you got to put it out there and then do one of these. <laughs> Just sit back. <laughs> Give yourself a full body wink if you need to. <laughs> yeah. All right, Stefan, you got this. So I, but anyway, thank you is what I'm trying to say for that yeah. great compliment. Wink. And, <laughs> oh and I was going to ask, where can people find you? What have you got going on? What would you like to plug? Yeah. Well, they can find me on um, Instagram and TikTok. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sam Bear Comedy. And uh, you can also find me on Facebook, Sam Bear Comedy. You can find me on my website, www.samanthabearman.com. If you're struggling to spell my last name, which so many people do, I don't know why. Hmm. But yeah, my last name is Bear, like the animal, and then man, like the overpaid gender, and just <laughs> pushed together. I love wow. that joke. That is how I've been introducing myself for years, and it's a really good gauge the audience joke. That's like if it great. does not land, I'm like, whoa, we are going to have some fun because you're not going to like anything I say. So I'm going to oh, say no. like the most That's what you liberal things. Up. Yeah, I do. I like it. I like it. Find yeah. all the mics in the crowd. Definitely. Uh, and then I love when men and women laugh at that because then I come for the men. I'm like, it's true, right? Like, you know, and you know that we know, right? Like, you know, <laughs> we could do the same job. <laughs> I'm taking home 75%. 75 cents of the dollar. Anyway, oh. it got dark. So, um, <laughs> meep, meep. We'll be, toot, toot. Uh, I do have comedy shows uh, coming out in uh, Santa Barbara, California, but I also do comedy coaching, and that can be done nice. virtual as well as in person. Yeah, and I have a new group launching next month. Uh, I usually only do five clients at a time because when mm-hmm. you work with me, I give you one on one attention. It's eight weeks long, and we really help you elevate your tone of voice, 
audience engagement, microphone skills, writing, transitions, which are really important, obviously, to get from one joke to the other. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just a lot of start and stop, you know, a lot of meet meeps, if you will. And uh, we also just help with reframing and finding the funny in kind of the absurdity of life. And I love working. I love working with comedians because I can really see the progression. Mm -hmm. But I also have enjoyed working with people who told me they never want to perform, but they're trying Mm -hmm. to work through something that's happened in their life. Like there was a Mm -hmm. woman... I worked with her for two sessions. So we worked together for 16 weeks, so quite a long time. And she was overcoming a uh, relationship that ended that she just could not, you know, overcome her heartbreak. And Mm -hmm. there's Mm -hmm. no one way, I think, to overcome whatever heartbreak you're going through. And I said, we ended up writing. She did most of the work, but helped her along the way. Mm -hmm. We wrote, we rewrote the ending. We rewrote what happened. And... She said, can I do that? And I said, uh, it is your story. You absolutely can do that. And I, so I love being able to give people that permission, which I don't need to be the one to do it. But I think often we need someone in yeah. some kind of assertive position to say, you can change everything about this story and mm-hmm. keep only one sliver of truth. And right. this right. is now what the story is. Right. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. And so she delivered it to me and we practiced it and she does not want to do stand-up comedy i said i think this is hysterical and people would love to hear it but Mm -hmm. it was for her and she i could see her her progression was different to watch but it was equally as satisfying because i saw her be able to to close a chapter of her life that was very difficult for her but to do it on her terms and to do it laughing that's amazing yeah i love that i love that oh it's so cool to see that i was listening or watching a special of somebody that well, I haven't finished it, so I don't know how it ends, but they were talking about how they ended up, uh, they had some serious depression and they told the story through comedy and it's a really beautiful thing and being able to rewrite the story or just revisit it and be mm-hmm. able to find some closure and and move forward. Yeah. That is beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. So I do have comedy classes and like I said, they can be done virtually or in person mm-hmm. and I love working with new people, so finger again find me online (laughs) pew pew all all right well thank you so much the links are going to be in the show notes people so if you want to just click your little thumb there or click your mouse on those links you can go follow sam support her give her some love all right well thank you sam thank you thank you guys pew pew Pew, pew. finger shotgun i don't know what to do well all right bye guys Oh, and that was the episode with Sam. What a delight, wasn't it? Yep. I don't know why I always ask you an expected response. That was delightful. I need to be more assertive with how I speak. Guys, that was amazing. I fucking hope it is if it's you guys are at the end and you're listening to me right now. So if you guys have made it this far, you only have one more step to be able to just click on those five stars and leave a review, subscribe, tell a friend, share on Instagram, do whatever you have to, to you know, let you know that you did your best. Uh, Because right now I feel like you aren't. You just one more step, you can do it. Tell a friend, like Grams, Grandma. Have you heard a comedy advice podcast? That's Stefan, such a charmer. He can charm a snake out of a barrel. Just (laughs) sounds like one of those sayings that they say in Texas. I don't know if you're from Texas or what the deal is, but hey, I appreciate it because I can. I've done it before. I grew up in Cottonwood, Arizona. There were a lot of barrel snakes and I just charmed them right out. I was like, hey, would you like to be a guest in the podcast? And they were like, yes. And they came right out. So a little charming old me surprised you there. Anyway, I could go on and on, but I'm going to stop right here, right now. 